in the world. I have a doctorate in history, economics, and politics with a minor in theology, and I also have a doctor in physics focusing on research in and experiments in electric and motion systems. Okay. Now, why I see the world as the geopolitics of a uh, greatly impacted by a region's historical dynamics. For example, let's take Europe. Europe was originally from brother there was Greek and the Etruscans and the Vikings and the Celts, all those groups predate the, the Moors, uh, which came from Arabia. Uh, uh, but um, more importantly, when the uh, we had the Roman Empire, uh, that was very impactful, impactful for the region for the region of Europe. When the Roman Empire fell, it continued. Then there was the then of that the papacy came into existence. And then that they have the called the Holy Roman Empire. And throughout history, um, the Holy Roman Empire have. Uh, Make made many reappearances like Charlemagne and Justinian and uh, all the way down in in the, the present time in the recent, most recent time with Hitler and Mussolini trying to resurrect the Holy Roman, Holy Roman Empire. So the Holy Roman Empire have a very strong pull in Europe. Now that I too, especially countries of the with, with a Catholic background, also have uh, um, great, great pull. And throughout history, what we have seen in, in European theater is the attempt to revive the Holy Roman Empire around, around nations with a Catholic um, lineage, for example, Spain, Portugal, France, Italy, Germany. But uh, many other, some of the regions, some of the countries in Eastern Europe. And I, uh, and I think at the moment, if we look at the European Union, what we're seeing is um, a kind of slow streamlining process where countries, um, with a Catholic background such as Germany and Poland, and, uh, and Romania, and Hungary, Italy, France, Spain, and Portugal, etc., etc., want to come close together and create a streamlined process with you know more um, unified uh, military policy, more streamlined financial policy. And with that also, attempt to have um, close, close to the river. So I am, I'm, based on what we've seen in Europe, is basically just a, um, a continuation of historical dynamics, where, for example, uh, the Roman Empire, then the whole Roman Empire, um, would be great, greatly influenced by the, the Vatican, made numerous attempts to um, resurrect and um, form um, some form of um, alliance or some form of um, close coordination. Okay, and what we see now with the European Union is is another attempt uh, in a long history of doing that. And so we look at um, we tend I, I I see that the Germans and the Poland and and, and other countries in Europe, such as uh, Romania, and Hungary, and Italy, and so forth, try to come up with a more streamlined European Union, and try to come up with a credible alternative by making the Euro a credible alternative to the dollar, and a, another, uh, and a stronger military um, union, so as to also be, become more self-sufficient 
and no longer relying on American military um, uh, security guarantees. So I see up here, a streamline your opinion in. Um, leading led by um, with a Catholic um, leaning and with the Vatican playing a somewhat role in bringing them close together. So you can have um, a streamlined European Union with a, um, a military, uh, a cohesive military and a cohesive financial system so that the euro can replace the dollar. And we see it, it happened many times in history. We look at you know, the Charlemagne and um, Justinian, and even um, the most recent attempt when Hitler and Mussolini mm -hmm. tried to form some form of alliance to kind of bring back the Roman Empire in the spirit of Charlemagne. Even today, there's a Charlemagne prize, okay? And so I, I say you, I, I, I'm thinking, um, I'm looking at more, there about between 12, 10 to 12 countries in Europe um, getting close together. Uh, as especially now, seeing that the, the United States no longer want to pay for their defense, I think uh, at some point you're going to see a streamlined European Union with the uh, that had a strong group of nations with a strong Catholic background come to come close together and with a strong military union and a strong financial union so the euro can replace the dollar and the European currency that is also, is also a possibility. Now and with that they would then try to as done in World War II are important for history trying to team up with countries like Turkey and Syria and other Sunni uh, Arab states for their energy needs. Okay. And also here to uh, reassert their sphere of influence over this um, military military and air. Right. And over here you know, as we now we're seeing with China oh. and Japan and Korea, even though they have uh, been uh, historical enemies, with the United States no longer want to, you know, carry the burden. And these countries are so begin to form a little power block over here with China and uh, in the China like Vietnam, Thailand, Burma. And in Japan and Korea, you know, even though they have strong historic, they've been they've been historical enemies. I think as time progresses, they will have no choice but to start looking up for their own interests and needs, especially with the tariff wars and with the America no longer want to continue to foot the bill. These countries in Europe want to get together and do the whole thing up here from the one part black and team up with certain Arab states like Turkey and Syria. And Sunni are the Sunni Arab states, uh, so they can uh, so to supply Europe, Europe to supply Europe energy needs. And over here, we see with China and you know Russia and the countries come close together um, to fight for their own um, economic and military survival and. Um, uh, and because as with the tariff wars are going, and as with the um, issue of uh, the tariff wars are going strong, and as the uh, United yeah, States no longer want to pull the pull for the bill, they will also think of their own republic over here too, with Russia and China and other countries in Asia from their own thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing over here. The United States um, uh, tuition is a little bit murkier, but at the end of the day, I think a region uh, historical dynamics affects and will affect their current and future geopolitical um, 
on the pinnets. Nice. Yeah. Let's see over here. Yeah, over here, which has a strong, which has been for one once part of the Roman Empire, and then the Holy Roman Empire, with a strong Catholic on the penance, who come close together and streamline the process. Probably cut down to 10 or 12 countries, come, come streamlined, and provide for the whole defense and the whole. Uh, uh, military needs and provide a credible alternative to the dollar with the euro and linking up with the uh, some, some, they would say Turkey and Syria and the other Sunni Arab countries will provide we'll, we'll for the energy needs. And here we will have you know, Russia, China, uh, Congress Asia from them on the power block. Um, so we see have Iran and other Shiite countries from the one power block. So we have one power block in Europe, one power block in Asia, and then a power block over in the Middle East, and one power block um, with the Sunni and the Sunni Arab countries and Turkey you know, link providing the energy needs to Europe. And then you have the Shiites such as Iran and other countries so to from the one power block. So then the world is currently the the world the um moving towards different power blocks um around the world as the United States steps back from its uh, role as the world superpower and, and the humanity. All right, that was my two cents. All right, thanks so much. And have a good day. Yeah. And uh, welcome. This is Dr. Sophie Rothschild's show. I'm Dr. Sophie Rothschild. And I want to briefly talk to you about the idea of breaking the bonds of Earth and going to Mars again. Well, currently, the way we go about the inference is that we have to rocket. A rocket is basically a controlled experiment. Explosion. How that means? You have, for example, let's say this is a your rocket, and at the back you have your hydrogen, your oxygen. It goes in a chamber and it burns and it creates an explosion and it pushes the vehicle forward. It's called ac um, um, the idea of action and reaction. Um, so the, the hydrogen and oxygen. Goes into a chamber, it burns, and it will uh, counter an explosion, and it pushes the vehicle forward. Space it is very inefficient, and it's um, actually got very expensive and it's a waste of money. Uh, this is the 21st century. We need to find more efficient, uh, efficient ways to do things. Yeah, the fourth elemental force is gravity, there is a strong nuclear force, a weak nuclear force, and electromagnetic. These uh, forces are present throughout the universe. So how should, why not use the um, rotating magnetic fields? And best of all is, you have a uh, running craft, you have rotating magnetic field, and rotating magnetic field surround the craft, and it now it create a lift, where it create like a rope, a lump of shadows on around the craft, so that the, um, the craft has less something called um, uh, friction. So you have rotating little magnetic fields around the craft to create lift, but also it ionizes the space around the craft so it can uh, create a vacuum around that, and that also allows the craft to move more efficiently with less friction. And uh, that's a much more better way to do it, and, as opposed to get some, get a vehicle and test some explosive on your ass and blast off. That's actually silly, and it's laughable and it's too dangerous. So when well, since here we have the vehicle, we have rotating, rotating electromagnetic fields to help lift the vehicle, but also it energizes the the the, the space around the craft. And the energization lead to like a vacuum on the craft, and the vacuum on the craft um, <laughs> um, 
uh, working on the craft leads to uh, um, uh, reduce friction, so it can uh, create less heat and better movement. And that's the way, that's a way God will do it. <laughs>